Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at creating a rain style particle effect with multiple versions of particles within the same system. So we've got the particle for the actual main rain itself, and then we've got a sub emitter which will show you the basics of creating something on a collision and then spawning particles off that so you can see the little splash effects that are created. I will put the whole project with all the resources on my Patreon for you to check them out along with over 120 other scripts and projects you can get hold of, but we'll try and do this tutorial with as limited assets as possible. So first of all, I've got a fresh scene and what I'm going to do is right click in my hierarchy, choose effects and choose particle system. And now I'm just going to call this my rainfall or whatever you want your particle to be. I'm just going to right click the transform and choose reset. I'm going to choose the shape and I'm going to set this to box. Then what we can do is we could set the size to 20 on the X and 20 on the Z, something like this. It's very dependent on what you want to do. Then we're going to take a velocity over lifetime because we need the rain to actually fall over a set period of time. So on the velocity over the lifetime on the linear, we're just going to say random between two constants. And we're going to say on the Y, we're going to say something like minus 25 and then minus 35. So we get some variation in how it actually falls. Then we're going to look at the bottom, which is the renderer. And we're going to look for the rendering mode, which will be a stretched billboard, which means that then the particles can become stretched in a direction that we choose to do. Then what we can do is we can choose the start 3D size. So we can set the start size and make sure we set between two random values so we're going to set x on both cases to 0 0.1 so it's quite thin we'll set the y between 1 and say 2 so we get a slight variation on how long the particles are and we'll also set the z to 0 0.12 and of course you can adjust any of these options you want yourself then from here we also want to make sure that the start speed is zero because then we just have everything from a uniform style point then we can look at the scene view at the top here and you can see that the particles move all the way down here and that's not really what we want we don't want them to move past the plane that we have which might be our flaw so we'll set the start lifetime something like two see how far they go and maybe one in our case, you could lift up your particle if you need it to be higher. Just depends on how you're going to work. We're gonna set the original color of the actual particle itself. And we're gonna turn the alpha value down to say 50% or around halfway. So we don't have as vivid looking particles. Then we're gonna to go to the emission tab and set that to around 100 because we want to spawn more particles if we want. And of course you can adjust the shape value if you need this to be more spread out. Then we're going to set the color of a lifetime. So then we can create a fade at the top when the particle spawns and at the bottom when it ends. So we get a more nice look around it. So we can set and grab this color and we can just create two points slightly inside Select the endpoints, turn the alpha all the way down in both cases on either end. So they'll fade in and out when they spawn in. Then what we're going to do is go to collision because I want these particles to be able to collide with anything that we have in the world. So if we set the type to world, you can see that now the rain kind of bounces off the top because it hits a collision in the world, which is my plane here, and it will bounce around. Now we can set the dampen to around one so it just stops so it adds some friction we can set the bounce to zero because we don't actually want the rain to bounce around we could add a sub emitter later if you wanted to have some splashback on the actual asset itself and life loss we can have to around 0 0.5 just so that it loses the power when it hits the ground you can adjust this and make it smaller depending on how you want this to look. Then we're going to choose to add a new sub emitter, which is going to be something that when these particles die or they reach the collision, we're going to spawn something new. So you can see on our sub emitter here, we can do this on collision. We can add a new particle system by just clicking the plus and you can see that it spawns the particles there and you can see it'll be now a child of our particle system. We can just call this splash or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a new material for this. And what I've got is a circle rim shader, which I've created in Photoshop. So all it is is a circle with no fill and it has an outline and it's got a glow just to make the edges slightly transparent. So then we get a very faded edge. We can create a new material by right clicking, create and choose material. 
and then you want to choose the particles standard unlit make sure the rendering mode is fed and then you can add your new sort of circular rim material to there and make sure you take the opacity down maybe to the alpha down to 70% roughly. You can, you can adjust these accordingly to how you want it to be. So we've got that shader now. We can go back to our splash sub emitter or our particle, which is a secondary particle. And you can drag that into the slot and you can see it there. It almost looks like it could be something like bubbles. Isn't that pretty? You could come and join my Patreon to get access to this and 120 different scripts, assets and projects you can't find anywhere else, along with my great assets on the Unity store and my website for bonus discounts. And be sure to throw a like on this video and subscribe because it really helps me out. So thank you for being amazing. Now in this case, we want to use the rendering mode and we want to set that to a horizontal billboard because we want those to appear on the floor when we do it. So we want to make them appear horizontally rather than in any direction. Then we can go to the top of the particle and set the duration to two because we don't want these to last as long. We can set the lifetime also to two and we can set the start speed to zero because we don't want them necessarily to move around. Then you can set the 3D start size if you so wish, but I'm just gonna leave this default at 0.5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the simulation speed to around two, which will affect how quickly they will appear. Then we're going to go to the emission because we want the emission rate over time to be zero and also the rate over distance to be zero. We want the count to be one because it should only happen when the particle collides with the sort of floor that we have. And then the cycle should also be one because we only want to do it once when we choose to do it. Then what we could do is go to the shape and make sure that we have a box. And then again, we can go to our color over lifetime and again, create that basic fade. So they will fade in and out from start to finish. So you get a much more subtle look about it. And then one last thing, we want to be able to make the particles grow over time as if the water would splash and we will just do the size of a lifetime, which is the tick box. And we want to make sure that the graph is just from the bottom to the top in a constant gradient all the way up. And then we get that look of just growing as it gets bigger and bigger. And again, you can move all of these particles around and you could go back to your velocity of a lifetime for your original parent particle. And you can set the Z to between a value of one and two and you get slightly more angled rain. Let's say if you had more of a rainy day, which would have wind that would affect it. And you can make yourself a varied set of rain effects with the splashes. So let me know what you think. Be sure to come and check out my great assets on the Unity store. Come and support me on Patreon to get access to over 120 different scripts and projects, including this one that you can't find anywhere else. Thanks so much to all my patrons, all my subscribers and all the awesome people who watch my videos. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.